Hold on. Okay. Sorry. Where we left off on the last part of this video. I'm so sorry, you guys. My computer is being so slow. <laughs> will eventually load, I think. <laughs> okay, so we got all the way down to here. So letters will represent the different alleles, okay? A capital letter represents a dominant allele and a lowercase letter represents a recessive allele. So now you just drag the top one down and bring the left one over to figure out what's going to go in each square. So this first one would be capital T, capital T. The next one would be capital T, little t. Capital T, capital T, capital T, little t. Mendel began his experiments using true breeding parents. He soon discovered that the tall trait was dominant over the dwarf trait. Cross a true breeding tall pea plant to a true breeding dwarf pea plant. So what is the genotype of the first parent? If it is a true breeding tall pea plant, then all of its children will always be tall. Okay, so it has to be homozygous dominant or capital T, capital T. What is the genotype of the second parent? To be a true breeding dwarf pea plant, it has, even to just show up and be a dwarf plant, it has to have both little t's because it's the only way you'll see a recessive trait, right? So that's homozygous recessive. So first you place the alleles on the first parent on the top of the square, just like so. And then you take the alleles of the second parent to the side. Then you fill in the squares to show all the possible combinations of alleles that the offspring might inherit. In this case, all the offspring are going to be heterozygous, big T, little t. Because one parent can only give big T's and the other parent can only give little t's. So that's the only possible combination that the kids could get. So use this table to show all the possible genotypes and phenotypes of the offspring and the probabilities of each. So in that last Punnett square, we know that all four offspring, so four out of four offspring will be heterozygous for big T, little t, and that's their genetic makeup, and phenotype, all four of them will be tall. So in the problem above, none of the offspring will show the dwarf trait. As we learned earlier, Mendel wondered what had happened to the dwarf trait. He allowed the F1 generation to pollinate. Show this cross using the Punnett square below. So the F1 generation from the previous line, they were all heterozygous, okay? So it's going to be a cross between two heterozygotes, big T, little t, big T, little t. So we can put them on the outsides of our Punnett square, and now we drag and drop them, right? Big T, big T, big T, little t, big T, little t, little t, little t. So genotype, we have one quarter, big T, big T, two fourths, right? Because there's two out of the four boxes have big T, little t, and one-fourth have little t, little t. In terms of phenotypes, how many of these show as tall plants? Well, anything with at least one capital T will be tall. So in this case, that's one, two, three out of the four boxes are tall, and one out of the four boxes is dwarf, which is exactly what his... Um, initial experiment showed him. So having dimples is dominant over the absence of dimples. 
So cross a heterozygous dimpled man with a woman who does not have dimples. Show all your Punnett work, uh, all your work in the Punnett square and summarize your findings in the table. What is the genotype of the man? According to the word problem up there, okay? So a heterozygous dimpled man. What would that genotype be? It's very, uh, hopefully you can guess, okay? So what is the genotype of the woman if she does not have any dimples? So the genotype of the man, heterozygous, means he has to have big D, little d. The woman to not have any dimples at all has to be recessive, recessive, little d, little d. So we put those in our Punnett square, drag and drop them, and we see that these are the probabilities, okay? This is what the offspring are going to be. So for the genotypes, half of them are heterozygous, big D, little d, two out of four, and two out of four are little d, little d. So half of their children will have dimples and half of them will have no dimples. Normal skin color is dominant over albino skin. A woman who has normal skin, but whose father was albino, marries a heterozygous normal skinned man. What type of offspring might they expect to have? So what is the genotype of the woman? And what is the genotype of the man? So the woman's father was albino, which is recessive. So she had to get one of his recessive alleles. But since she has normal skin, she got a normal dominant allele from her mom. There is also a heterozygous normal skinned man. So he will be the same genotype because heterozygous means you have one of each. So now we do our Punnett square and we put them, drag and drop them. So AA, Big A, big A, big A, little A, big A, little A, little A, little A. So genotype, one quarter is homozygous dominant, two, two quarters or one half are heterozygous, and one quarter are homozygous recessive, little A, little A. The phenotypes, three of them have big A's. So three out of four will be normal, and one out of four will have albino skin. So how many different genotypes are possible among the offspring? How many different phenotypes are possible among the offspring? What is the probability of getting homozygous offspring? What is the probability of getting heterozygous offspring? What is the probability of getting normal offspring? What is the probability of getting albino offspring? So let's look at these. Why don't you pause the video, take a minute, see if you can solve this yourself, and we'll go over it. So how many different genotypes are possible among the offspring? Well, we look under the genotypes column and we have three different options. Big A, big A, big A, little A, little A, little A. So there are three different genotypes. How many different phenotypes are there? There's only normal and albino, so there's only two different phenotypes. What is the probability of getting homozygous offspring? Well, big A, big A, and little a, little a are both homozygous, okay? So two out of the four boxes are homozygous. What is the probability of getting heterozygous offspring? Well, we can see two of the boxes in our Punnett square are big A, little a, so two out of four. What is the probability of getting normal offspring? Normal meaning does not show albino skin, okay? So if we look under our phenotypes column, we have three quarters normal, because if you look back at the Punnett square, three of the four boxes have a capital A. So that gives you three out of four. And what's the probability of getting albino offspring? One out of four, because only one box contains little a, little a. 
All right, I want you to read over this one and give it a try yourself. So 